Good afternoon, students. You are welcome to another video episode on chemistry of lipids. In today's lecture, we are going to be discussing about sphingophospholipids and lipoproteins. So what are sphingophospholipids? They are the major class of phospholipids that are composed of sphingomyelin. And sphingomyelin contains sphingosine backbone rather than glycerol. So are the second major class of phospholipids that are composed of what? Sphingomyelin and uh, the backbone is not glycerol, it is uh, spingosine, and we have seen the structure of spingosine. So in spingophospholipids, the fatty acid is attached by an amide linkage to the amino group of spingosine, forming a structure that is called ceramide. And the primary hydroxyl group of spingosine is esterified to form uh, to the uh, phosphoryl choline group. Remember, choline is attached to the phosphoric acid residue at carbon three. So this uh, the hydroxyl uh, primary hydroxyl group of the spingosine is uh, is esterified to phosphoryl choline. Spingomyelin uh, is the uh, predominant or prominent. Uh, a molecule that is found in myelin sheets. And these myelin sheets, they are membranous sheets that surround and insulate the axons of some neurons. And so the name sphingomyelin. So this uh, sphingomyelin is found in myelin sheets and this myelin sheet helps in insulating the, the axons of neurons understand and as I cited an example in a previous class that you can take uh, an example of let's say electric wire whereby you have uh, an insulating uh, plastic rubber or rather that's uh, black and, and, and red rubber that is now housing the copper wire preventing uh, uh, preventing what uh, what we call a contact between the two wires so as to prevent a uh, disastrous event that will occur as a result of that contact. So spring, you can take that as an example of myelin sheets that insulate the axons, you know, axons of the uh, neurons that transmit uh, uh, electrical impulses in the nervous system. So structurally, if you look at the structure of sphingomyelin, you have the, the sphingosine, sphingosine backbone. And when you have a fatty acid that is attached to the sphingosine backbone, you form a structure that is called ceramide. So in ceramide, you have, in ceramide you have sphingosine and fatty acid attached. Then for uh, generally the sphingomyelin, you can see it consists of ceramide, phosphoric acid, uh, phosphoric acid residue, and choline. Okay, or you can say it consists of sphingosine, fatty acid, phosphoric acid, and choline. So um, that's an example of uh, of sphingo phospholipids. So for the next example of the lipids, membrane lipids that we are discussing, we have what we call glycolipids. And these glycolipids, they are widely distributed in every tissue of the body, particularly in the nervous tissue, such as the brain. And they are the major glycolipids that are found in the animal tissues and one of the major glycolipids that is found in the animal tissue is 
uh, glycosipingolipids. They contain ceramide, and this ceramide is fatty acid that is attached to sphingosine and one or more sugars. Example, we have galactosyl ceramide, which is a major a glycosphingolipid of brain and other nervous tissues. It's found in relatively low amounts in other tissues. It contains a number of characteristics, 24 carbon fatty acid. For example, we have cerebronic acid. Cerebronic acid is a 24 carbon fatty acid that is found in the uh, uh, glycosphingolipids, especially in lactosyl ceramide. So structurally, this is the structure of galactosyl ceramide. And we can see that it has a spingosine backbone and attached to the spingosine is a fatty acid, which is 24 carbon fatty acid, which is a cerebronic acid to form the ceramide group. And you have galactose attached. So for galactosyl ceramide, you have galactose, cerebronic acid, fatty acid, example, cerebronic acid, and you have what? Spingosine. So galactosyl ceramide can be converted to another molecule that is called sulfatide, and sulfatide is sulfogalactosyl ceramide. If you look at carbon-3 uh, of the galactose, you can have a substituent group, sulfuric acid substituent group here attached to form the uh, sulfogalactosyl ceramide or the uh, sulfatide. This, uh, example, this is an example of, uh, of sulfolipids. So glucosyl ceramide is the predominant uh, simple glycosphingolipid of extra neural tissues and it also occur in the brain in, in small amounts. So for sulfolipids, the lipid material contain sulfur, and you can call them sulfolipids. So lipid material that contain sulfur uh, are called sulfolipids. So a cerebrocyte sulfuric acid is presently uh, found in brain, and its structure contain spingosine, cerebronic acid, galactose, and a sulfate group on the galactose. So when you have a spingosine cerebronic acid and galactose with a sulfate group, uh, sulfate group attached to the galactose, they are all uh, sulfolipids. And they are the most abundant sulfolipids that are found in the white matter of the brain. So another class of lipids are uh, what we call gangliosides. Gangliosides are complex uh, glycosphingolipids that are derived from glucosyl ceramide. They contain, in addition, one or more molecules of sialic acid. So for gangliosides, they are present in nervous tissues in high concentration and they appear to have receptor and other functions. So they function as a receptor molecules, allowing some molecules to be attached to the cell membrane for either communication or transportation. So the simplest gangliosite that is found in tissue is GM3. We have others GM2, GM1, and GM3 contains ceramide molecule and one molecule of uh, glucose and one molecule of galactose and, and one molecule of N-acetylneuraminic acid. N-acetylneuraminic acid is sometimes abbreviated as NANA, N-A-N-A, -A, or N-E-U-A-C, New York. So in the shorthand nomenclature use, we have GM3, right? So G means gangliocyte and M represent monocellular containing species. And the subscript tree, it's a number assigned on the basis of the chromatographic migration of that particular gangliosite. You know, we have GM1, GM2, 
in GM3 as an example. So, and GM1 is a more complex gangliocyte that is derived from GM3. Uh, is of considerable biological interest. It is known to be the receptor in the human intestine for cholera toxin. You remember their general function, they serve as receptor molecules. And these receptor molecules are found on the surface of the cell membrane and for either communication or allowing transportation of some um, materials out, uh, into the cell. So when you have a molecule that is attaching itself to the membrane protein or membrane receptor, for instance, here when we say GM, uh, this, uh, GM, uh, GM1 is, is found in the human intestine receptors in the human intestine, the cells of the human intestine, the cell membrane consists of GM1, which serve as a cholera toxin receptor. So for you know, um, vibrio cholerae causes the, the cholera. So, and it's the, as a form of a virulence factor, the, the organism has some toxin that they release. So this toxin now come and bind to the membrane via this GM1. So because this, this GM1 is serving as the receptor for that particular toxin. So we have other gangliocytes that contain somewhere from one to five molecules of sialic acid and give rise to either di or tricyalogangliocytes and so on. So for GM1 gangliocytes, structurally it consists of ceramide and this ceramide is acyl sphingosine, uh, which is, it means sphingosine attached to fatty acid residue. So we have ceramide, glucose, then galactose, and you have what N-acetyl galactosamine, and, and you have what galactose, and you have what N-acetyl neuraminic acid in the structure. So, or you can abbreviate this as CER, GLC, GAL, GALNAC, GAL, and NUAC. So it means you have ceramide attached to glucose, glucose attached to galactose, galactose attached to N-acetyl galactosamine, N-acetyl galactosamine attached to galactose. And in the galactose in the middle here, the middle molecule here is attached to N-acetyl uraminic acid. So uh, that's it about uh, 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 phospholipids. So, here we'll be discussing about uh, lipoproteins. So when we say, when we look at the digestion of, of lipids, of fatty acid, of fats and oil, so generally we know that lipids are, they are insoluble in water, so and if they are insoluble in water and we have the surrounding medium for transportation in the body after digestion of the lipid material to produce the fatty acids and other molecules, we is blood. So how are these now lipids transported in the blood? So they are transported via the help of lipoproteins. And these lipoproteins, they are fats that is, uh, when you look at fats that is absorbed from the diet and lipids that are synthesized by the liver, by the liver and uh, adipose tissue, they have to be transported between the various tissues and organs for utilization and storage. So, and we know that lipids are insoluble in water. And the problem of how to transport them in the aqueous blood plasma is uh, a kind of solved by the associating nonpolar lipids, which are triacylglycerol and cholesterol esters with antifatic lipids, which are phospholipids and cholesterol, and the proteins to make them water miscible lipoproteins. So lipoproteins are complex molecules 
that have a non-polar lipid core consisting mainly of triacylglycerol and cholesterol uh, esters. So the difference, okay, and cholesterol esters, which are surrounded by a surface of layer of amphiphatic phospholipid, cholesterol molecules, and apolipoproteins. So the difference between cholesterol, or free cholesterol, and cholesterol esters, because in this lecture we'll be discussing about, we're we'll talking about both cholesterol and cholesterol esters. So cholesterol, uh, free cholesterol is the unesterified cholesterol that is ready, readily available for the body to undergo the, all the transformation that can occur on cholesterol. While for cholesterol esters, they are esterified, the we are going to look at in subsequent classes the structure of, of cholesterol. So we we'll look at the structurally, it has OH group, which is which gives room for the esterification that is giving us the alcoholic group that a fatty acid, which is an organic acid that can come and interact to form what esters, right? Reaction between organic acid and alcohol to form ethyl ethanoids or from uh, alkyl alkanoids rather, which are esters. So for cholesterol ester, the OH is already engaged and you have uh, uh, you have it uh, in form of uh, fatty acid attached to it or other molecules that is now ready for, for storage. Okay, for it's ready for storage in the body. So now for cholesterol, this they are out, they are all oriented so that uh, the the head the polar head groups face outwards to the aqueous medium as in the case of as in the case of what the cell membrane. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm going to talk about it. 